When we see godlike, amazing plays in the pro scene, it leaves us in awe, staring at the screen in disbelief. It's plays like these that attract our attention to the game and inspire us to keep getting better. But these godlike plays are only possible for godlike players, those who've mastered the game and developed their skills to a level that seems impossible. And while watching high level players might motivate us to get better, perhaps this motivation is hopeless, because achieving a godlike level of skill feels impossible, and the path to get there isn't very clear. But in truth, even those godlike players started as beginners. Even they grinded, gathered experience, and developed their skills one step at a time. And by learning how they achieved such a high level of skill, by understanding the process that made them godlike players, you'll be able to see that even you could do the same. So that's exactly what I'm going to explore in this video. I'm going to show you how your favorite pro gamers went from zero skill to godlike skill over the course of their careers. And by understanding the process from absolute beginner to complete pro, you'll be able to understand the difficulties and shortcuts along the way. This will allow you to avoid the obstacles that hold back many skilled gamers and help you to rapidly achieve a godlike level of skill. When developing a skill, we tend to follow a specific learning path from absolute beginner to complete pro, or as Stuart Dreyfus would put it, from novice to expert. In his five-stage model of skill acquisition, Stuart Dreyfus lays out the process one goes through to master a skill, the same process that your favorite esports pros went through in their journey to the big stage. And in order to clarify the main ideas of this process and apply them to your own journey, I've simplified his ideas and boiled them down to four core stages. The first stage and the starting point that even the greatest players began at is what I like to call the student stage, a point in which you must learn the absolute basics. The first step as a student is to find a good teacher. This teacher can be an actual person, say an esports coach or a friend who's great at the game, but it can also be reliable tutorials or YouTube guides. Once you've found your teacher, you must open yourself up to learning the fundamentals and motivate yourself to master them. For many, it's hard to adopt this mindset because they don't want to let go of their ego. They simply want to pretend that they already know what to do just so they don't look foolish. But this is a huge mistake, because to learn something new, you must let go of everything you think you know. You must wipe your mental slate clean and become a student who's hungry to learn. So once you've found a teacher and adopted the necessary mindset, you'll begin by learning the basic elements of the game and the proper actions you must take based on these elements. For example, if you're just picking up the game League of Legends, you'll need to learn the rule of last hitting. You'll learn to identify the elements of an enemy minion's health, then you'll learn that when its health is low, to execute the action of attacking it. And if you time this well, you'll get the killing blow and be rewarded with precious gold. So at first you'll need to learn all of these basic elements and rules, whether it be learning to last hit, block an attack, or toss a frag. But of course learning these basic rules is just the start, and by blindly following them, it'll produce poor performance when you're actually in a game. For example, by always going in for the last hit, just because a minion's health is low, you're sure to become vulnerable and fall victim to your enemy's attacks. So as a student, you'll not only need to learn the basic rules, but you'll also need to learn the context in which these rules make sense and don't make sense. This will be dependent on learning important situational elements, such as how close your enemy is to you while you're last hitting. And based on these situational elements, you'll create memorable maxims to guide your actions. As an example, you'll learn to use the minion's health 
as well as the enemy's distance and range to determine when to last hit. To remember this, you think of the maxim, last hit when the enemy is at a safe enough distance. And since a safe distance is dependent on factors like an enemy character's range and their playstyle, this and other maxims will be learned alongside specific examples and experience. So as a beginner or a student, your key is to focus on learning the fundamental rules and situational maxims that guide your performance. Mastering the stage requires both a strong understanding for these fundamentals and the ability to effectively apply them in game. Only once you've mastered the fundamentals and developed a strong knowledge base of the game will you be able to move on to the next stage in the process. Unfortunately, many players hit a major obstacle at this stage that causes them to improve slowly or even burn out. And where most people fail is by losing the motivation to make progress. When beginners realize how many fundamentals they need to learn to get good, the game begins to feel less like a game and more like a job. Dota is an online multiplayer game that's so popular its championship trophy comes with an $11 million prize. It takes thousands of hours to learn Dota's rules, and most people give up long before they achieve basic understanding. So start me on the basics. How do you explain Dota to somebody who has no idea what's going on? The way I would try to describe it is it's five versus five online play. Players will choose a hero, which there are 100 plus of. There are a ton of heroes to choose from, and each of them have their own skill set. So the objective, there's three lanes. See, it's already getting complicated. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously easier if you play a bit, but Dota is just one of those games that the base level is very high. And of course, when the game begins to feel like labor and stops being fun, you'll quickly burn out and stop making progress. But how do you avoid this? How do you prevent this type of burnouts and progress to the next stage faster? The answer is in focusing on a few specific fundamentals at a time while keeping things fun, purposeful, and competitive. You can do this by entering normal matches and then setting personal goals that are focused on one or two fundamental aspects. For example, you might enter a game and ignore your KDA. Instead, you'll just focus on last hitting in order to learn how to do it safely and effectively. Then to go a step further, you can record your CS for each game and try to set new personal high scores. Or consider making a mini game with your friends where you focus only on one or two fundamental skills. For fighting game players, perhaps set up a match against a friend where you can only use one or two specific moves. As a result of staying focused and keeping it fun and competitive, you'll naturally stay motivated to keep playing. And as a bonus, you'll quickly master the game's fundamentals without it feeling like a chore. After some time as a student, you'll develop a strong understanding of the game's many elements and rules, and you'll do so to such a point where you suddenly know just enough about the game to realize how much you really don't know. But don't fear, because this anxiety-driven realization is a sign that you've reached the next stage in your skill development. This stage I like to think of as the scientist stage. Because you now have a large enough knowledge base of the game, you realize how complex and unique every situation really is. And you understand how many important aspects there are for you to constantly focus on. As a result of this overwhelm, you're no longer able to tell which fundamental rules or maxims apply in each scenario. For example, you learn that you should last hit only when the enemy is at a safe distance, but the enemy may not be aggressive and may not attack you when you're briefly in range, meaning that this maxim might cause you to lose opportunities. Or consider if the enemy's main poke is a skill shot that you can avoid by positioning behind your minions. Or what if you want to bait their attack so your jungler can come and gank them? The bottom line is that at this point, there are an exhausting amount of elements and combination of elements to keep track of. As a result, you can no longer rely on fundamental rules or maxims to guide your actions. 
So, to cope with this overwhelm and confusion, you must develop your own rules and maxims for specific situations. And to do so, you must learn through trial and error. To begin, you must learn what aspects to focus on and which you can ignore in a given situation. For example, you may be overwhelmed while last hitting because you learn that's important to track your enemy minion's health, the enemy laner's range, their abilities, your vulnerability to being ganked, etc. But having to pay attention to all of these at once just to know when you should last hit is exhausting. So you devise a plan of focus so you can filter the important and unimportant elements. For example, you realize that a major factor is who you're laning against, both their character's capability and their playstyle. So you start each laning phase by identifying your opponents and then testing them to see what they're capable of. Once you've identified a reliable plan of focus, you'll be able to tell what is important and generally what needs to be done, but you won't know the best way to accomplish it. After analyzing your opponent's poke capabilities and level of aggression, you know that you can bait their skill shots or hide behind your minions when last hitting, but you aren't sure which is more effective to stay safe and you aren't sure how to reliably execute either one. So this is where the scientist mentality really comes in, since you will be constantly faced with unique decisions and won't know the best possible actions to take, you will have to rely on trial and error to improve. You'll have to simply make a decision, execute it, and learn from the results. You'll have to learn through experience how to handle a full mana Ezreal who's one kill ahead of you, or how to anticipate and tech an aggressive Zangief. It's only through trial and error and unique experience that you'll learn the opportunities and ideal decisions to make in various situations. And it's this process of trial and error that's so unique about this stage. Suddenly, you're no longer relying on fundamentals or previously learned lessons in order to improve. You're now relying on your own decision making, thus taking on the full emotional burden of every choice. And of course, this poses an obvious problem, since at this point we're still in an early stage of learning and so dependent on trial and error, we're prone to make a lot of mistakes, and naturally this causes a lot of emotional stress, which is why it's often this stage that holds many players back. Players at this stage often get overwhelmed with the emotional burden of choice, causing them to get tilted and throw the game, or just as bad, they cope with it by placing blame on external factors. To avoid this, one might think the best solution is to detach emotionally and play with a robot-like quality, but in reality, almost the opposite is true. In fact, nursing educator Patricia Benner has found that unless a trainee stays emotionally involved and accepts the joy of a job well done as well as the remorse of their mistakes, they'll stop improving and burn out. And a potential reason for this is that emotions are important for memory formation and decision making. For example, you may have heard the saying that people make decisions based on emotion, then justify it later with logic. And this is often true. In fact, on a neurological level, decision making based on emotion is much faster and much more efficient than consciously thinking. So it makes sense that while learning, we must wire our decision making with a relevant emotional response. That way, our decisions in the future can be made easier and faster. This means that it's important to take full responsibility for your successes and failures and embrace the emotions that come along with them. In fact, Stuart Dreyfus notes that it's important at this stage to even brood over your experience, replaying the performance in your head move by move while experiencing the emotion of its outcome. The point, however, is not to analyze your mistakes and insights, but just to let them sink in. Experience shows that only when you can do this will you improve and become an expert. To recap, the first stage of skill development includes adopting the mindset of a student and learning the rules and maxims of the game. To master these fundamentals quickly while avoiding burnouts, 
Practice them in a way that keeps things simple, fun, and competitive. In this second stage, you're forced to start making your own decisions and learning through trial and error, but only by embracing the emotional weight of each decision and brooding over the experience will you allow your brain to effectively learn. By continuing in this way, you'll be able to build up a strong mental storage of experience, allowing you to quickly progress to the next stage in your skill development. But this next stage will be left to explore in the next video. In part 2, I'll show you how to continue improving and developing into a high-level player, perhaps even a godlike player. Achieving such a high level of skill is something we all desire, but for many this desire feels hopeless. And the reason it feels so hopeless is that the path from beginner to complete expert is commonly shrouded in mystery, hence why we often attribute high skill level to some sort of godlike gift. But I hope that this guide has so far demystified this for you. I hope by showing you the first stages of skill development, it has illuminated the first steps of your own development, the first steps that you can use to launch yourself into the worlds of professional gaming. Hey guys, I hope you loved this video and I hope you got a ton of value from it. If you were inspired by it or learned something new, then tell me about it in the comments down below. And of course, if you're excited to see part 2, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you'll be able to see the next video right when it comes out. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.